I'm Bill Joyner. I'm here with Francis Eckstein, who is uh, serving as a photographic technician right now to complete this little project. Um, I'm going to tell you about one of my favorite short films called Parable. It's only 20 minutes long. It is something that was produced by the New York Council of Churches back in the time of the World's Fair in New York in 1964, I believe. And so I went to that fair and the Protestant Pavilion had this film showing continually. There would be no comment, no introduction. They would get a theater full of people and show Parable, which is the story of a, an allegorical, mythical, white, august type clown, uh, racially indistinct and gender indeterminate. <laughs> uh, okay, so this clown wanders into an old time circus he doesn't wander there, actually he's following it on a, on a mule. And uh, we see various scenes of the circus, see it rolling into town, the colorful wagons, the blaring music and so forth. <laughs> and then, you know, it's all set up and there aren't many people around. It's sort of, uh, later on, they do appear when the big show happens in the tent. But in the meantime, the clown enters into the life of the circus at the lowest level, carrying water up a hill for a man who was watering the elephants. And uh, that pretty well astounded this guy, and he started following the clown. And uh, the next thing that happens is that a black man is seated on the game they call Dump the Dope which is at all, all fairs, you know, where a guy sits on a diving board kind of thing, and if you throw the ball and hit the target, then that guy will go into the drink. It's called dump the dope <laughs> in some places. Anyway, here's this black guy. He's sitting up on the diving board, waiting to get splashed into the water, and there's an evil kind of looking um, guy with a well, he's in charge of the game, you know. He's got this tennis ball, or this ball anyway, that he's throwing at the target. I guess he's just testing out his equipment at the expense of this guy that's sitting up there. We never know. It's ambiguous. We never know exactly who represents what. But this um, man who is operating the dunk the dope game <laughs> is obviously up to no good, you know. And he looks up. And the black guy isn't there anymore. It's the white clown. So that really ticks him off. So he starts whamming his balls in there, and of course the clown goes into the water and comes up smiling. Uh, <laughs> it's a funny movie in a way, but it also is very profound. Um, then uh, the clown wanders on through the circus, pretty much creating chaos as he goes. You know, he, he's just in there for fun. And to take the place of people who might be experiencing some embarrassment. Like the woman who is in the box and the swords, the man is up there demonstrating how he's going to punch the sword through the box at every conceivable angle and the girl will pop out, of course, okay. So <laughs> when the uh, magician, as it were, um, opens up the box, somehow the clown has taken the place of the girl. And he just shrugs his shoulders as if to say, surprise. <laughs> and so there are about uh, three or four, well, there's about three people who are now seriously after the clown because um, he has messed up their act. So the next scene is the big show in the big tent, the big top. And um, here is the king of the show, Magus the Magician. He's the real power behind the whole show. And he's, a, he's tough. 
He is controlling the strings of the human puppets that are in the Punch and Judy show. And that in itself, you know, historically, has been a, a cruel joke parody of uh, family life, I guess. <laughs> you know, um, abuse and destruction, Punch and Judy. So that's what the live marionettes are enacting. Well, the clown comes into the arena, and his first act is to take a brush and to clean off the shoes of the kids. It's all kids. The audience is just kids with hoods, hoodies, over their head. They're not, they're just kids, but they're indistinct in that they have that um, uniform over them, you know, those hoodies. Okay, so they're sitting there watching the Punch and Judy show when suddenly the clown is brushing off their feet, their shoes, and they get tickled. And the um, magician then, pulling the strings, gets really angry because he glances over and sees the clown messing up his show. So um, the clown takes a look up there at the victims, really, the uh, human marionettes, who are in it. They don't know what to do, you know, they're just in the show. They're all just in the show. But the clown, he's a little different. And when he sees up there what is happening, uh, the, um, you know how the Punch and Judy show goes, you know, the guy takes the baby and throws him into, into a oblivion and abuses his wife and so forth. So, um, the clown then takes the straps that control the harnesses of the pup puppets and he lets them down. He releases them. There are three of them. And of course, the um, Christian symbology comes in. Some people look at it that way, but you could look at it just as a human experience kind of thing, too. Really, it's a story of transformation as you will see as I go on with this. Okay, so the clown lets down the puppets and they run away. And the uh, clown puts himself in the middle of these um, harnesses and the magician pulls him up and up to the top of the tent and stretches him out. And meanwhile, the entrepreneurs who have been offended come in and they punch him in the side and they do this and that to injure him further and he goes out with a great scream that you it's about you know there are no words uh, but this is the only human voice that you hear in the film when he screams and you see the exterior of the circus tents and the scream seems to seems to just go all over the world and the clown is dead but the magician isn't through with him. He's in the tent all by himself now because the kids have run out, all the others have run out, and um, he still wants to pull the strings, though the clown is inert. And um, he pulls the strings, but he has no power. And then when he realizes that, he just abandons the strings, and um, the next scene shows the circus going out of town, getting ready to go out of town, and the um, magician is in his tent. He's in his, what we used to call a caravan, you know, in the really old days of the circus. A motor home today, but horse-driven then. And um, the, client, the magician is sitting there at his makeup table, making himself up as the clown and you see the white paint going on and um, then you see the circus moving out and behind the circus is this clown this white clown on a mule following the circus that's parable 